<laughs> if one person will pay me, I can get other people to pay me. And I could see like, like, okay, if I can make $1,000 this month, let's try to make $2,000 next month. Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. This is a podcast for creators and entrepreneurs and dreamers, and we have a very special guest with us here today. And I don't know if she knows this, but she is actually responsible for me being a full-time creator. So I'm very excited to welcome to the podcast today, Ashley Wilson from At Home with Ashley. Hi, ladies. I'm excited to be here. And you give me too much credit, Christina, but thanks <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and in case this is your first time watching the podcast, I'm Christina Mascari of Pretty Distressed. And I'm Maggie Honeycutt. And yeah, it's going to be a great interview today. I just want to read a little bit about Ashley and her background. Uh, Ashley is the creator behind At Home with Ashley and based out of Logan, Utah. She decorates with lots of color, creates whimsical DIYs, and shares Ikea hacks and vintage shopping tips. Ashley has been blogging since 2015 and became a full-time content creator in 2017. So she has some longevity in this game, and we're excited to learn all about her business model and what she is doing in 2024 in her business. So welcome, Ashley. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat. Well, let's start kind of at the beginning. So you started blogging in 2015. Can you kind of give us some background of what kind of led you into blogging and sharing like all the things that you were doing and how that evolved into full-time content creation? Yeah. So my son was born in 2015 and I had to work full time to be able to, you know, pay our bills. And I was like, I want to be home with him. So I was like, maybe I could start a blog. And so when he was six months old, I started my blog and my husband was like, that's a nice hobby, honey. <laughs> and I was like, no, this isn't going to be a hobby. This is going to be my full time job. And I really worked hard at it. And you know, I had, I always had a blog and I had an in Instagram at the same time. And that slowly has evolved to be a full-time job for myself and my husband. So. Yeah. And so before you got into it, did you have a background in design or writing? Like how yeah. did you make that transition, you know, to documenting all these cool things? Yeah, so not a background in writing, but definitely design. Um, I went to school for interior design. I went to FITM in Los Angeles. Oh my so gosh, I have this my makes so much sense yes. because you are so <laughs> talented. If and We're going to be flashing up some of your pictures of your stuff, but Ashley has that such nice a unique point of view and her stuff just looks different from anybody. So this is this is giving me confirmation of like, okay, yes, she is special. She is different. <laughs> yes. So I'll let you keep going. This makes so much oh, sense. Nice to that I is don't... a really big school. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a really good school. And I like interned with a good interior designer who really actually influences my style. And then I started working as a visual merchandiser out of college. So I worked in furniture showrooms and I would, you know, move stuff around so that stuff would sell better. So, and I would do photo shoot styling. So that was my full-time job when I started my Instagram. So, so this was a natural kind of transition for you. Oh yeah, for sure. When I went to school for interior design, I was like, I am not confident enough or I didn't want to design people's actual houses. So merchandising was good for me, but then this is a much better fix. I can just stay home and do my own thing. So, yes. And tell us like, your feed is stunning and your style is so unique. Is this um, an aesthetic that you've kind of developed over the years? Have you always had like just a love for color and antiques? Kind of tell us about that. I mean, it's really evolved. When I started my Instagram, um, so that was like eight, year, uh, eight and a half years ago, everything in my house was gray and black. So I cannot color, believe that. That is really hard. Well, I'm going to have them. to go back to your archives. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true though. Like all of my walls were gray. All of my trim was black and I was sick of it. So I slowly started painting the walls white, adding a little bit of pink. Um, my husband wasn't like super excited about it at first. <laughs> and now look at what's happened. So uh, he's come around because he like knows that this is my look and like, 
like you have to be unique in this space to be able to grow an audience. You really have to. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Well, tell us, okay, so you started blogging in 2015. You went to full-time content creation in 2017. Tell us kind of about your business model and your income streams and how you monetized it so that it could be a full-time income for you to replace, you know, you were working full-time. So tell us about that. So I was making most of my money on the at the time on sponsorships on Instagram. And this is when they were brand new. So it was like so much different. Like brands would pay you even before you posted then, which is like that's changed. And um, so I would make a monthly goal of how much money I want to make and do my best to hustle and like get that income in. Um, and then when I was closer, I, so I put all of that money in a savings account and my goal was to have six months of savings all earned up before I quit and be making the same as my full-time job. So when that happened, I put in my two weeks notice and I quit and it was nice because I had that savings. So then if I had a low month, we could pull out of there to pay the bills, but like it was fine and it felt good. So I kind of suggest doing it that way, having a lot of cushion. Yeah, I I think that is very smart. And I want you to take us back to those beginning brand partnerships. And how did you go about getting brand partnerships? When you say you hustled, were you literally cold DMing people, sending emails? So for some, if uh, there's a creator watching this who has yet to get into brand partnerships, Mm -hmm. tell us how you got started in that space and would you say recommend them to do the same? Yeah. So my first um, partnership, I had 2000 followers on Instagram and I got paid, I think it was like $25 or $35 to post about a candle from a boutique. And I was like, so pumped about this because I was like, (laughs) if one person will pay me, I can get other people to pay me, you know, and it like was nothing at first. And I like, I have a planner with all of my first like stuff that I would make. And it was just a little bit here and there, but it did add up. And I could see like, like, okay, if I can make a thousand dollars this month, let's try to make $2,000 next month. And yeah, I would like, I would DM people. I prefer to do email personally. I feel like it looks more professional. Um, and I would find brands and email them and see if they'd work with me. And a lot of brands would just reach out because sometimes I feel like once you have a collaboration, it's like a date and you can get a second date easier because brands see that you're wanting to do that work. Um, so that's kind of what I did. Yeah. And I see. So I have been following Ashley for a long time. Um, I'm just going to do like a little aside of how I met Ashley. (laughs) I met her in 2019 at the first Haven I ever went to. I was not a full-time content creator. I didn't realize I had a YouTube channel with 40,000 subscribers, but I didn't realize that that was a big deal because I caught, I posted on it sporadically and I had a couple of videos that did really well that I was earning maybe like a couple hundred bucks a month. Maybe it got up to a thousand dollars per month at some point. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Haven and see if I can do this full time. And I met so many wonderful people and it like encouraged me, but Ashley's class was all about creating a media kit and setting rates and pitching brands. And no one had ever there was nowhere to go to learn about that really on 2019. Maybe people were talking about it on YouTube. They definitely weren't talking about it on Instagram. They weren't selling courses. There was a lot of gatekeeping going on. And so I give you credit for, I mean, you were the most transparent, open person that I met at Haven. It was the class that I learned the most out of because you were like, here is my media kit and you had your rights on it. And you were like, here is how I negotiate. And just that level of transparency, it changed my life forever because it gave me the confidence to be like, Hey, I can go ask somebody for $200 for a YouTube video. And that's what I did when I went home and it was slow goings. Like I didn't get, I think my first brand partnership for maybe like six months. Cause they were like, we need to see consistent content from you. But I had like that little carrot hanging in front of me and I wouldn't have that confidence. And I wouldn't have had that knowledge to be able to go out and do that without you sharing that. So thank you for like starting the trend or at least just, I, I don't know if you're the first person, but I was the first, you were the first person that I ever saw. Um, just be so transparent and not do gatekeeping. And I can't imagine how many people have that same story 
from Haven and maybe they just haven't had an opportunity to say it to your face, but I just want to just tell you like how much I appreciate you. You're just one of those people that really changed my life. And so I hope today having you here on the podcast is going to put you in front of more people that like just the information that you're sharing and your transparency level is going to start so many more businesses today. So I just want to thank you for that. Yes. See, that like makes my day. I like have chills. That's so sweet. And I don't think people were talking about it. It was wild to me. Um, when I like told them I wanted to teach that class, I did so much prep because I was, I really wanted to help people. Um, so that means a lot to me. And one thing I want to say is when I worked at a furniture showroom, like my the girl that worked next to me, she did brand partnerships. So she would show me everybody's media kit that came in. And so oh, wow. I saw a lot of media kits and I saw behind the scenes of her working with influencers. And so I learned a lot from that. Like I learned what not to do. You know, I learned like it was really interesting. So that was really helpful to me. Yeah. And I think, you know, Ashley and I are both active kind of in these, in these conference areas and networking with different people. And I think we're always scared to share our rates because we think someone's going to be like, you're not worth that rate or -hmm. you're not charging enough. There's like an insecurity Mm -hmm. level of you're being afraid that you're going to be judged. And I just like the more transparency you put out there, the more like fairly people are going to be paid and people I the number one thing that I hate is seeing people taken advantage of um and I don't I don't ever stick it to the brands for like taking advantage of people they're just trying to be within budget I've worked on both sides I've worked for corporations before you have a budget that you have to stick to and if you can get kind of the same amount of content for a lower amount of dollars, you're going to take that. Like you have to be educated as a creator of how much is my stuff worth. And the only way that we can keep that conversation open is by being transparent about what we're charging. And I know it feels ick to talk about money, but honestly, like it's empowering and that's how things grow. So I just appreciate how, like what a trendsetter and a trailblazer you've been um, in helping us be vulnerable about our rates because it's hard. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's so scary to put that number out there. And every yeah. time I do, some people are like, wow, you charge a lot. And some people are like, you don't charge enough. Yeah, And like, I don't know, you just got to, <laughs> it's like, it helps to talk to people about it. Cause then you can like, kind of see, like I, sometimes on my close friends group, I'll talk about like brands that are like, they're like wildly strange on things. And then other people are like, yeah, I had that same experience. And it makes you feel less alone in what yeah. can kind of be an isolating <laughs> career. Yeah. Yeah. I love too, though, that you encourage people that it's okay to get paid for your content too. Like you said in the beginning, even if it is $25, $50, you're encouraging people to set the precedent that this, my content, my creation is worth something and setting that standard, you know, to get paid even if it's a small amount in the beginning. So I think that that is a really good message as well, because when we're talking about payment in the creator space, it's like the rising tide rises all ships. Like the more people are saying, no, my stuff is worth money. The less people are going to be giving it away for free, which I think is a very positive thing in this space. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if a lot of people are working for free, brands will have less of a, (laughs) reason to want to pay some people so well and there's so many different layers to it as well because I know when I first started out I would just you know give them everything for for a set amount of rate and I learned oh no if they want to use that on their website you need to charge them extra for that and you need to put terms on it you need to say you can only use this for a year because a lot of these contracts will say in perpetuity and I need you guys to know that that means until forever that means like after you're dead (laughs) still use it. I don't think they will be, but like, you don't know, like what if Ashley gets picked up on a HGTV show and then has her own line at target and all these things, which I could totally see all those things (laughs) for you. And then you signed this deal three years ago where you just, they were like, Oh, they're going to give me a thousand dollars, um, you know, to post this on my blog and they wanted rights to the photo. So I did it anyway. So I just gave it to him. Well, now Ashley's like a big superstar on HGTV and has her own line at Target and they're still using her likeness to sell their product that maybe she doesn't even use anymore, that maybe she doesn't even like anymore. Maybe it broke two years later and she's like, I don't even want to be associated with that. But at that point, you are chained to that forever. 
So it's like having that knowledge of licensing your content, using my likeness in a commercial or boosting it, like those need to have terms on them and it needs to incur an extra cost. Because at the beginning, I didn't know any of that stuff. I have signed no. some really bad contracts, you guys. So yeah. don't, don't feel bad Me if you too. sign something like that, but you learn as you go along. Yeah. And one thing you can also learn as you go along is if you get a crap contract with stuff like that, you can redline it. You can say, hey, I would like to change this. Like brands are used to that. It's not you being difficult. It's just part of the negotiation. That's such a good, that's that such a good, point. I'm like a people pleaser and that's so Same. good. And that's something I've just learned in the past couple of years is like, oh, I don't just have to sign this contract. I can send it back red line. I yeah. think I learned that from Bong Bang, who I would really love to have on this podcast too, because she's super smart. And she's so and, smart with Brandon. Yeah, and she she's one of those people that doesn't gate keep either. And so I just love having people like that on the yeah. podcast because we're just here to encourage you and help you out. There's no, we always say this, there's no like degree you can get in this. Yeah. And there are courses you can take, but everything is constantly changing. So that's why we like to have these fresh conversations with people who are like in the trenches doing the day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, are you still now in 2024 negotiating your own brand deals? Have you brought somebody on to help you? I am still negotiating my own stuff. I, I tested out a brand manager like in 2020 and it was not a good fit and I've got scared of it since then. <laughs> but I mean, maybe I should, but right now I just do it all myself. I just like, I have a, I have a power problem. <laughs> I like to be yeah. like, like my husband does my accounting and like all the building on my stuff, but yeah, I do all the negotiating. Well, as someone that knows you, you're, you're good at it. Like I've seen you walk know. through that process and talk about it with me and you're good at it. So I think that's why a brand, like a band, a manager doesn't necessarily do any good for you. And it also seems like you get a lot of inbound requests. Is that, would you say that your yeah. inbound requests yeah, that you're getting true. are about 50% or is it more than that? Yeah, more than that. I mean, unless I'm doing a big project, I really don't pitch brands. I have a good amount that just come in on their own. So that's kind of nice. And yeah, if you they're... have a brand manager, they're going to get a chunk of that, which like for some people, they feel like it's worth it. And I just don't, which is fine. Mm -hmm. You remind me a lot of Kyle Ortiz in that note. Yeah. We've had him on the podcast uh, before and him. his inbound is so crazy. But his the thing is, is <laughs> like both of you, the thing that the, the thing that I can connect with that of why you're getting so much inbound is that you're both very unique. You stand out in the space. So I think you're popping up when people are out there searching for things. You look yeah, different. You, so you yeah. stand out, number one. And number two, all of your partnerships that you guys do seem very organic to me and still seem very much you and don't, I don't ever feel like I'm watching an ad. And so I think mm -hmm. that those brands are noticing that too. And that's why they want to work with you. So yeah, hopefully, cause that's the goal, right? Like it feels like you don't feel like it's a commercial break. I don't know. Like it's a lot of work to try to do that. I know you know that, Christina. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm definitely different than you. I'm kind of like, yeah. and I, I have no shame in this. I am a basic person and I always have been. <laughs> I like wear Uggs. I like to wear black. I am not trendy. I am just, I have a Stanley. Like I, there's no shame in my game. I am basic. My home is very monotone, monochromatic because I can't mix colors together. And there's people out there that are like me. And there's a lot of people that look alike, like me, but I do have my own personality. So I try to bring my oh, own flair sure. to things. But I understand that I am like a very basic person and that's okay. There's still room for me too. Oh, yes, there's for there sure room for you. And there's lots of things that set you apart. Like you're big YouTube following, not like in this yeah. space, not a lot of people have that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so can you talk to us about 2024 and if you're seeing changes in the way brands are partnering with people and how that has kind of evolved you know, even just the last couple of years, how that has changed. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, last year was really slow for me with brand par partnerships until Q4. And then it was so busy and I was really grateful for it. And I've actually listened to another podcast that talked about that there was a media recession um, just because they were scared that there would be a recession. So they pulled back. Um, so across the board, I think a lot of creators saw that it was slow, but it's speeding up again, which is so nice because there's a lot of us. And so it was, it's nice to make money off of your hard work. So and sponsorships are kind of the best way. 
So for me, I'm seeing things looking good in 2024 and I'm really optimistic. Well, and you have beautiful still images on your feed. Are you, are brands still coming to you wanting stills and not just short form video? Are you seeing that still short form video is what most brands are wanting? Is it a mixture of the two? What are Everybody you wants on? a short form video from me. A few okay. people want <laughs> a few people want photos, but mostly it's the video. It's just okay. like I resisted reels so hard for so long. And then I was like, whatever, I'm gonna embrace it. I took a course on it and I like made a reel every day for 30 days. And that's when my growth started when it had been stagnant for a while. And I grew like 200,000 followers in like seven, eight months, you know? So like <laughs> Video is here, so you kind of have to just go with it, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, okay, so tell us, you have this business. What is your support system like for your business? Are you doing it all yourself? Do you Have you hired out things to some other people? Tell us what that looks like for you. Yeah, so I, my husband and I are the only, like, creators with at home with Ashley I don't have anybody else hired for a while my sister did some blogging stuff for me but she's like moved on to do other things so it's just like kind of me (laughs) and I'm always like should I hire someone but I'm I'm scared of it I don't know what it is maybe I should hire someone but yeah it's just me and my husband (laughs) Christina do you have anybody that's a long story. <laughs> um, Maggie, so how we started doing this is Maggie does a lot of support stuff for me, but we That's just had nice. a meeting last week and completely changed like her role. Because when I first brought her on, I was just drowning in like the admin stuff. So I had so yeah. much stuff booked for YouTube and so much stuff booked for Instagram. I just needed her to keep track of it and keep me on track. And so she was just doing a lot of things to help free up my time so I could just make the content. Well, yeah. things have shifted in the past couple of years and like just have lost some partnerships have, you know, my YouTube money is changing because it's not as much as it was back in the day. I have like my big videos are kind of slowing down. So it's like, you need to keep mm. creating content. So now we've kind of switched her to focus on affiliates for this year. And we're going to see how that goes. Cause affiliates was just kind of something that I had. You know, because yeah. you, you have it. Like I, people ask, where did you get this? What paint are you using? So everything's always linked on YouTube. Everything's always linked on Instagram, but it was just kind of an afterthought. And then I started mm-hmm. meeting all these people that are content creators and seeing how much they're able to make on their affiliates. If um, It's insane. People yeah. can make a full-time living on affiliates. So I was like, oh, I feel like I'm kind of missing out here. I'm just like doing Mm -hmm. the bare minimum on this. So let's figure this out. So she's in my, in the background of my Amazon. Now we're tagging like, Hey, we put this link on the blog. This link is on YouTube. This link is on Instagram. Cause I have all the things, you know, all my content goes all the places. So we're like, let's see what's actually bringing in money. So we're in the process of tracking smart. Interesting. Cause I don't do that. Tags on Amazon. And we just have like, we're just doing So I'm like, it's going to be a good six months before we know where stuff is coming in. But it's already been helpful because she's been doing a newsletter for me. And I'm like, I don't even know if anybody's reading this thing. And we've been linking more to like my storefront and things. And we're seeing sales come through the newsletter. And we're like, we had no idea. We were just putting it out there. These are good things. It was doing something. So (laughs) we're being a lot more strategic with what she's doing now. And I'm having to take back on the pitching and stuff. Yeah. for brands, which I haven't been doing any pitching. So it's like, okay, That's what's exciting. going on? But we're just kind of, we're figuring it out. No, like you, when have you have to shift, you have, you have to, to shift. And like you said, if you wouldn't have, if you would have dug your feet in and been like, I'm not doing reels. Cause I don't like them. It's not me. I take, I have beautiful stills. I'm a blogger. I'm an interior designer. I'm not going to do all this real stuff. Cause I don't enjoy consuming it. I don't want to do it. And that's, you're saying that's what all the brand partners want right now. For sure. So you would have missed out on it. And it's like, yeah, are there some things that I don't love doing? Yeah. But like, should I just like test it out? And does it end up turning better? Like now I'm all up in my Amazon analytics and I have a lot of fun back there because I'm like a data nerd. Um, I'm a data nerd too. Yeah. And like, if you can turn it into a game, like my husband plays video games, I'm like, (laughs) I don't play video games. 
I do SEO. And right. It's like a game for me. Yeah. So I yeah. did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I would just love that. See, that's, there's always something I would love to do the SEO and figure out the blog thing. And we have it. We yeah. Tear, turn all my videos, all my projects into a blog, but we're definitely that's not good. doing enough to like get it out there and have it. What's the word I'm looking at? Optimized. To optimize. Yeah. But there's only yeah. so many hours in the day. No. And um, there is an endless to-do list. Yes. Like you can always be doing something and that's the hard yeah. part of it. And I, so we recently watched this video by a content creator named Vanessa Lau. Okay. And I would encourage you to watch it. I mean, I feel like we're going to talk about it in every I podcast because it was just mind blowing. I'm going to watch she, it. She had created this huge, like, you know, what is it? Seven figure business. Is that million dollars? Seven figure business. Yes. Yeah. And she ended up walking away for like a year because it just turned into this thing that was like, cause she's with Alex Hermosi and people like that. It's just like more, more, more. And so like her new core principle is like, I want to have enough instead of more. Oh, and it, we talk that. about how being like an entrepreneur, your goal is like, I want to get bigger. I want to get bigger. I want to grow. I want more followers, like more affiliate sales, more bigger partnerships, get at it. And it's like, at the end of the day, once you hit that more goal, then yeah. there's always going to be another more on the other side. Yes. And so we're finding out like, what is my enough number? Cause I'm, I'm sure you you've that. had crazy months. Like I've my highest month that I ever had, I think I made like $45,000 or $50,000. Like amazing. that's insane. Yeah, it is insane. It's insane. It's, for me, it's not sustainable. No, I have I learned that is not sustainable. And so I'm learning like, what's my enough number? What is my enough number to maintain my lifestyle that I have? Because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, like, is a car or a bigger house or a better vacation or this or that gonna fulfill me? I kind of have figured out not really. <laughs> So yeah. I love having this business. I love being creative, but I'm trying to figure out what is that enough number for me. So yeah. it's been like a fun journey trying to tweak things and figure things out and not just be chasing dollar signs anymore, which I never thought I was doing. But when I kind of stopped, when I, lo I lost like a huge brand deal at the beginning of this year, I had a contact, mm -hmm. a contract that got canceled and it I'm was sorry. like a real gut check for me. It was like, for Oh, sure wow, my worth is really attached to how much I brought in last year. And, and even in the creator it's space, people will be like, I may, I may, I brought this in. And like, so you should listen to me. I'm like, Ooh, I don't like that part about myself. Um, yeah. yeah like, it's so, an important thing. And money does motivate me, but I, I'm yes. with you that like, you got to figure out like, when is it there, like you, you only have your mm -hmm. family for like mm -hmm. a certain amount of time with young kids. That you can't just be working all the time. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Yeah. So, but it's still important because like, we're not going to run businesses without making no. money, but also like, why am I doing it? What am I really wanting to share? Um, so when you yeah. are in it, that's why I love having you on here because you've been in it for a long time and just being able to see for these sure. shifts and how people adapt. If you want to be a creator, you really do have to be adaptable because there's going to be seasons mm -hmm. where you're at the the top of the mountaintop and you're like, wow, this is great. But it always comes down. It's like the always. market. Yeah. It's and so, so you hard. have to be able to, you have to be able to ride those mountaintops and those valleys um, and just really figure out what works for you and what's sustainable for you. For yeah. sure. So yeah. It's interesting times right it now. It is interesting times. Yeah. I think that's well, a tell great us conversation. A little bit about how, how do you balance? You have younger kids, correct? And how yeah, I do have you? A nine year old, one nine year old, a, so. a nine year old. Yeah. So how do you balance being a solopreneur, entrepreneur, <laughs> having a family when? I mean, you're a DIYer too, so you live in the midst of your projects. Yeah, it's how wild. Do you <laughs> put boundaries around being able to like set aside work and be with family. Like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I always take the weekend off. So like oh, Saturday and Sunday, always that's like non-negotiable. Um, another thing that really helps me with boundaries is I work out in the morning and I write in my journal. And I know that sounds like so cliche, but both of those things help with my mental health so much because being on the internet, people are rough. They're mean. So those things like help me like, like work through like the rough parts. Um, and then always like during the holiday time, I will take at least two to three weeks off, like after Christmas, like around Christmas to New Year's, just because like, I like log out and it's so nice. It's like one of my favorite parts of the year. So those are kind of like my boundaries. 
Yeah, that's good. I love all that stuff. Those are all good practices. It is so important. Do you also have a community of peers that are in your industry that are kind of a support system to you? Oh, for sure. And that's like, like sometimes I'll talk to my, my friends that I've made on here and I'm like, this is the best part of influencing is the like relationships I've made, the people I've found that I can trust and really talk about things to. It's made a huge difference and it takes a while to find those people, but it's everything I think. That's amazing. Um, what would you say like longevity, I think is something that we really have to honor in this space because being able to adapt and change over the course of, I mean, 2015, that's eight, nine years. Yeah. Yeah, what, <laughs> what do you attribute your longevity to? What has kept you, you know, going throughout the changes and just this period of time yeah. to continue on with content creation? I think, I mean, I have a drive that's, you know, like my brain is always thinking of things. And so my drive just like, I like, this is so fun for me. Some parts I hate, but mostly I like, I'm so freaking lucky. <laughs> like yeah. I get to make yeah. my house pretty for my job. Like who gets to do that? So I like, that really drives me. Um, what else? What were, what was the question? How do I keep going? Yeah. The and longevity. Shifting, what's the keys? Yeah. Like being shifting. able to like shift. I have a friend, Hannah, and we like both push each other. Like she's like monetizing her Facebook. So I'm trying to monetize her, my Facebook. <laughs> Last year, Christina helped me with this. I like finally monetized my YouTube and just like trying to find different ways to like share your content. I don't know. I think it's fun for me. Yeah. Do you have, are you, do you have a lot of interaction with people in your DMs and like your email? Do people send you like, Hey, I recreated your project. Cause I can see tons of people like me that wouldn't know how to do something on their own and would just basically take your room and put it in their house. Do you get a lot no of No one does that. No, really? my stuff is so weird. I can see. Oh, I love oh, it. No. <laughs> like it's okay because I like I'm fine with the fact that yeah. like, I'm way colorful and way over the top with it this is fun for me but like I could see people doing that to you because okay you because I'm you, basic no because you reach a this is why yeah. Studio McGee and Joanna Gaines are so popular yeah. it's because they have a look that's palatable to a lot of people yeah but you know like now that you're saying this like this is what I love about you because I know a lot of people who have like a you know unique point of view like you but they dog like beige and dog basic and I never yeah. see you doing that like you yeah, always okay. encourage people like this is your home it is allowed to look whatever way you want it to whether it's in style or out of style or basic or colorful okay. and I love that about you um because that's not always the case when people are trying to make a unique point of view I just think you're like just a very inclusive person I think anybody that comes across your platform just feels welcomed just oh, like nice right where they're at you. no matter who they are yeah I try really hard at that yeah um but yeah I love that I think too your feed is just so beautiful to look at that even though it might not be somebody's style it's just so gorgeous and fun and I love to see the new creative things that you like are designing and doing around your house that you know, I think even though your point of view is very unique, everybody's kind of welcome there and love to yeah. like see what you're up to. But yeah, I have I always... a lot of people that follow me that are like, I don't actually decorate with these colors, but I like the inspiration. So yes. I'm fine with that. Like, come on. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, what I always wonder is where does your inspiration come from and how are you always coming up with new projects in your house because to me your house looks gorgeous and finished and like how could she make it any better and come up with a new yeah. project like where is your inspiration and how are you continuously like coming up with new projects for new content yeah um like right now youtube's been my inspiration like finding new creators on there and like taking kind of the stuff they do and adapting it 
Because, like, it's so fun when you have a creative, like, a different point of view. You can take something that someone else has done and put your own spin on it, and it looks super unique. So, like, I'm always, like, trying to learn new things and thinking, like, okay, how can I, like, change this? Um, Or, like, I'll have a problem that I'm trying to solve, and I keep it in my brain for a while, and all of a sudden it'll hit me, like, a new idea, and it's so exciting. Um, Like, a lot of times it's when I'm alone, when I don't have to be like productive, I'll have really good ideas. So like alone time as a creative is so important. Like my husband will take my son and go do something and I'll just like, like I have this um, closet door I made into a hidden door case. And then I put like, and I made game boards that look like books onto it. And my husband took my son camping and that was the best idea I came up with last year. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's the alone time for me. Okay. So I always love to ask this question of creatives because I know how my mind works and I'm a super unorganized person, <laughs> but it just yeah. seems to work for me. I tend to get my content up. So are you a planner or do you like to flow more in that creativity? And it's like, well, when I have something, I'll put it up. Or are you very scheduled of like, I got to post a reel once a week. I got to post this story. Do you plan things out or is it kind of more flow with how your creativity is going? I'm a little bit of both. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I have these projects coming up. Do I have set in stone what I'm doing next week? Nope. I have like (laughs) two options. Um, And so, yeah, I'm like, I'm more go with the flow, but I always like to have at least two reels a week. Every week, I for sure do one blog post, one YouTube and the content that goes around that. So okay, do you have a a little bit of both? Okay, cool. Do you have a max amount of like partnerships that you want to do in a month? Or did sometimes they all just stack up depending on what's coming at you? Or do you kind of have parameters set about like, I only want to do this many per month? Yeah, I have nothing like that. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I should do that. But it's kind of like when it comes, I say welcome. And I like try to fit it in like this week I have so much content I have to make behind the scenes yeah um, which kind of stresses me out you know because I prefer to share stuff as I go organically mm-hmm. but when you're working with a brand for me it's just so much better to like pre-record stuff yeah and then once they approve it I start plugging it in so yeah most people so- would hate knowing that but it's just like the way you've got to do it I mean, that's, it makes me feel better because honestly, that's just kind of the way that I am. And it drives my husband nuts. He's like, you could just be so much more efficient if you had systems and stuff. But if I, if I had systems, I don't feel like I would be as creative as I, (laughs) there's something that my, my body is wired. I've, I have self-diagnosed myself as ADHD watching all the the TikToks and stuff. I don't, I don't think I need medication or anything, but like my brain works best under deadline, under pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the way that it works. I work really well at night when no one else is like up and that's also terrible for you. For so sure. it's I do. just, I work at night too. After the yeah. kids are asleep. It's so nice. And I honestly wish I wasn't that way. And I wish I could get up and I could block out two hours and just edit for two hours and then go do But it's like when a when a idea enters my mind about, I want to put my hands to do this and see if this is going to work. I have to stop and go do it or the idea will disappear. If I write it down on a list, guess what? Even though it's on a list, it will disappear. Like the inspiration for it's just like when I, when it hits me, like I literally have to get it out. And so I've just given myself some grace with that is that it's, you know, this is a business, but I'm the CEO and I get to run it the way that I want. And could it run more efficient and make more money? It It probably could, but guess what? You can work with how your brain is wired. I think it's great. Yeah. Because like at a corporate job, you can't do that. No, you no. can't. And like, and, I'm, you know, I'm raising three kids that don't love school. I have one that hates school. And back so in the hard. day, like the only thing that was important to me was doing well in school because it was a target that I could hit. And I had a performance based mentality For that sure. has com- been completely broken off of me because I thought there was only one way to do something. You have to get a college degree. You have to go work for a corporation and work your way up to the corner office and all these things. And it's just like, that may work for some people, but it doesn't work for everybody. And so it's given me a unique opportunity to look at my children individually and be like, what do you like to do? And Mm kind of like try to foster those things in them and put them in a schooling situation and give them opportunities that are going to help grow a skill set that maybe they can do that job for the rest of their life. And like, you don't have to sit in a cubicle if you don't want to. You don't have to be a cog in someone else's company if you don't want to. 
if you want to, that's great. I'll support you in that too. But yeah, yeah so no, I'm trying I think to help that's them. That's a good point of view for kids. Yeah. Because like, just because you're not good at school doesn't mean you're not good. Right. You know, and that's like not helpful. So no. I, I'm glad they have you as a parent. So <laughs> I don't know you if know? they would agree. <laughs> but <laughs> I know this this summer I was like, my son really needs to get a job because he's in middle school. He's going to be in high school yeah. next year. And he's aged out of camps during the summer and oh, I still need to work. Rough. And I'm yeah. like, I think you should get a job at Chick-fil-A because you can work there at 14. And he's like, I'm not working at Chick-fil-A. I'm like, okay, maybe I can hire him to edit. Maybe I can teach him how to do the back end of Amazon. I'm like, you need a job. Like, let's go. We need to have yeah. some vocational training going on I, I think that's a good idea. And I am scared for the day that I do not have summer camp because I love summer oh camp. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, yeah. tell me about, like, what your family, what does your son and your husband think about what you do and yeah. how do they support you and all those all those things? Oh, my gosh. My son is, like, a little entrepreneur. He's so interesting. He, he loves to watch YouTube, so he'll have ideas for me. He's like, Mom, are you doing shorts? Or, like, he'll just have tips. And I'm like, I don't even know where you come from, but we'll like talk business together. I he love just that. turned nine. Like, it's so wild. So he loves it. And he's so proud of me. His teacher, like I hit 300,000 followers on Instagram lately. And so he told his teacher, he's like, we're celebrating today. And so at parent teacher conference, she's like, congratulations. <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed, but also like, it's sweet. Um, and then my husband's just like the most supportive, amazing person in the world. So that's really nice. Cause I don't think everybody could handle like having their wife kind of like, have a bigger career than them per se yeah but my husband didn't like his job before he hated it and so he takes on a lot of like the laundry and the cooking and the grocery shopping in like that you cannot underestimate how much of a help that is right oh my like, gosh yeah yeah like having that off my plate so I can spend more time creating like it's amazing so I have a really good support system and I do think I'm lucky everybody loves my husband so <laughs> that's okay nice. awesome yeah. Well, and it, it ties into that longevity we've talked about. Have you ha ever had seasons of burnout? Because I burn out oh, every sure. other month and I'm trying to figure out how to not do that. And so can you walk us through maybe just like a season where you had burnout and could you pinpoint what it was from and like, what did you do to move through that? Yeah. I mean, I get burnout in December a lot because I do too much. I take too many collaborations on, but it's so hard when you've had like six months of like it being like hard to pay your bills, having a yeah. lot of people being like, I want to work with you. I did burn myself out. And then like taking time off is how I like finally solved it. But at the end, I was like running on fumes and there was some stuff I shouldn't have said yes to. So I'm trying to learn how to be better about that. But it's hard. I feel you. And I think you're so good at just trying a bunch of different things and seeing if you like them or not. I know that you had a company reach out to you and you did a couple of Amazon lives for them. Did you like yeah, that fun. opportunity? Do you think that's something you're going to do more often? I don't know. Like it was really cool when they reached out to me. Um, and it was fun. My second one, like I learned a lot the first time. And so the second one went even smoother, like the timing of it, like you are supposed to fill 30 minutes exactly. So I had my Ooh, husband have tricky. like wow. two cards and be like, okay. you have five minutes left, slow oh, down no. or speed up. Like, and so like we got better at it. So it was really fun. And partly that was like, I, I talked to you about my game board idea. Um, I really monetized the crap out of that. And that was really exciting. It was a viral video I had and I got a lot of brand sponsorships from it. And I also got a lot of affiliate money from it. And I have never had a viral video result in a lot of income. I made at least $20,000 off that. That video. is so yeah. awesome. So like, I don't want to bring it up to brag, but it, like I learned so much from it. So it was just like kind of interesting. I made sure my link in bio had the links to the supplies. I had, you know, my blog post and my YouTube on it. So people could go and they're like, I want to make this. I can buy the stuff and I can see how to do it. And so I just like wanted to pass that idea on because it was really nice for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important. I mean, we, everybody wants videos to go viral, but if you're not monetizing it, mm -hmm. the yeah. virility, what is the point? Yeah. So, so I love that. I yeah. think that that's great. And I think there's two points. Like if you can monetize it, great. And if you can like get more sponsorship from your growth, because hopefully you're growing, it's the worst when you get a viral video and you don't grow. So yeah. 
for sure. So did you, once that went viral, did you reach out to brands and say, Hey, I had this go viral. Like I used this, I used this. Could I do create something for you? Or did you catch their attention and they reached out to you and wanted to, to do something based off of that really popular video? Yeah, a little bit of both. I did pitch the Amazon live and we did that because I pitched it. Um, and then, uh, cricket who I make like the covers with from, um, they wanted to do more projects together because the first one was a viral, like my big viral video that had like 11 million views was a sponsored ship. Oh, so like, wow. I never had a sponsorship do that. That's good. great. It was so exciting. When that happens. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Like, yes. Yeah. That's so, so great. Sorry for well, taking over. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. So you do, okay. You do so many things. You blog, yeah. you've done these yeah. Amazon lives. I know you've tried your hand at YouTube. Now you're trying Facebook. Like what, right now is your favorite thing like what gets you the most motivated to work on right now oh I still love Instagram I like okay. I just feel like my people are there it's like okay. my original home base and I love my blog too like a lot of people are stopping blogging but I just feel like with SEO like if you can write blog posts um targeted just to hit like help people you can like make some good money off of it so I don't know my blog is also really special to me do you make the majority of your money off your blog off of the like a media partner and running ads in your blog? Or do you see a lot of um, affiliate sales come through your blog, which was which is more lucrative? For it's a for sure more my ad network that I okay. have. I'm with Mediavine. I make around like 5000 a month just off the ads. So how that's many page nice. views are you getting and unique viewers a month? I'm we don't know a lot think. about that. But I have at least a hundred thousand wow. um, wow. sessions a month. So like I get good page views. So okay. that's nice. That's something like I tell brands like, because there's influencers who have a blog that just put up a sponsored blog post yeah. like once every six months, you know, but right. like mine is like very fostered loves area. Cause yeah, like, that's partly why I made the money off the board game thing. Cause it blew up on Pinterest. So then I got, Oh, that's tons such a good of point. Page views. So very that cool. Is a good point. Pinterest is underutilized for it is things. people don't like you for a while they slow like the pages weren't so good but it's back to like people are going there for ideas and visiting blogs based on it. Well, that's YouTube. good to know. Good that's to where know. we're seeing your blog traffic. I know it come from is that's see? one other thing she does too. Pinterest. She runs my whole Pinterest. I don't touch it. <laughs> nice, but thing. it's like this is just <laughs> the way the world works. You can't touch all these things. You really no, can't. It's too much. So you have to figure out what you want to do, what you're good at. And if you can hire out, hire out what you can't do it all at once. You got to yeah. tackle one thing first and see if you can get anybody to watch the one thing that you're doing. And mm -hmm. then you can grow and expand from there. But I mean, look at you guys, me and Ashley are just two regular people that one Normal day people. decided we wanted to put a project up on the internet and now we have businesses. And so I'm just saying there is nothing special about me. Like if I can do it, you can do it. You can. So that's For the whole sure. reason why we wanted to have this podcast and just encourage people like whatever that idea is in your heart. Yeah. Like look at all these amazing people that come from different backgrounds that believe different things that look different, that are sharing different things and they have a business. There's room, there's room for you out there. There's room for your voice. Yes. And for there's sure. no one way. There's no one to way to be successful at it. Yeah. It's not a copy and paste. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun thing about For having sure. different people like you on here because you do it differently than you do. Yeah. Then the other person we interviewed and everyone's successful and making a living. So I hope that that encourages you all watching out there and that you can just take what works for you from each sure. one of our interviews and podcasts and implement it in your own business. So. Yeah. And you know, as you're out here being inspired by creators, I would look for people like Ashley that have been doing this a long time and just try to glean from her. Okay. What she's got to be doing something right. If she's been able to stick around this whole time and know that it's a long game mm -hmm, and know that sure. this is not a get rich quick scheme. Um, we're going to be doing a podcast. Uh, actually it probably has already aired about Risa Tisa. Maggie made me learn about Risa Tisa. <laughs> we're not all going to be Risa Tisa and go viral in one I week. I saw your notes on that. I want to go watch oh, her. Cause girl, I don't know if you should, but we've done a whole podcast on it. And if y'all haven't watched the Risa Tisa podcast, go watch. <laughs> Maggie made me do yeah, it, but it's an important lesson on just like, you never know what can happen. You never know what can happen if you just put your story out there and have yeah. the vulnerability to have 
yourself, your life, and your your work judged in the in the arena of the public opinion. Yes, <laughs> good things can come from it. So. so, Ashley, I just want to thank you for your vulnerability and just yes. your time today. And like I thank have you. said, you have just been. You will always hold a special place in my heart. You literally did change my life. And so I know there's a lot of people that have that story. And I hope some people get that story today from hearing your story. Yes. Thank you. And I value our friendship so much. So thank you. I appreciate oh, it. I feel the same. I love you. You're so special. <laughs> okay. So Ashley, it is now time for our favorite things. Yes. Our it segment is. where we share things that we're loving um, can be from anywhere. So you're our guest. So we will let you go you first. And go tell, first? Us, tell us something you're loving right now. I'll tell you my favorite thing. So I talked about my game boards way too much, but the original idea came from ones you can buy on Amazon that look like books and they just released some new ones. And so I just bought Trivial Pursuit and I am very excited for it to arrive because it looks so beautiful and you can have they're it on your so shelf cute. without making yeah. it yourself. And they're like, they're all the same size, which I love because our yes. game closet looks oh, crazy. And, you know, I love what you did, but I'm never going to sit down and do that. I don't have exactly. the time to. So it's great for people who don't want to DIY can just buy the ones off of Amazon that are like ready to go. And they look so cute. They, they do look beautiful. so cute. Yeah. And they're a great gift idea, too. Yeah. Way good or like gift if you were doing like a girls weekend, how cute would it be to like have one on like everybody's bed when they get there or something? And then you can play yeah. games during the weekend. I love it. I love that. Such idea. a good idea. Do you want to go next? Oh my gosh, I don't have one. So you need to go first. Okay. I'll pull one out while you're doing um, I think <laughs> my favorite thing will be my Lanza Keratin Healing Oil that I've been using for my hair. <laughs> uh, we have a friend, Melissa, who has like the most gorgeous, she does. healthy hair. And so she is always telling me what she is using. And she told me about this and I'm on a healthy hair journey. And I put it on my hair when it's wet. I put it on when it's dry. And it has my hairstylist even mentioned to me that my hair is looking better and more healthy and feeling thicker. So your healthy hair journey. I, bought, I feel like you bought it like three different times. Okay. I, I feel like we talk about your healthy hair journey a lot oh, here, right. but it's a very important part of your life. It really is. It really is. And it absolutely <laughs> is. The, the, more I get into my 40s, I feel like the challenge. Everything just starts shutting down, guys. Yes. Dang it all it. goes south. <laughs> I got to make more efforts for these things that used that to That is true. Like, that used to come naturally. Come naturally. I understand. I, I understand. So. Well, and my, so I do, I do know what I need <laughs> to share because I have been struggling with my health a little bit lately. There have been lots of viruses going around. I'm not sure when this interview is going to air, but you can tell I'm kind of getting over something. Um, and the thing that has been saving me is liquid IV. I don't mm. know if you guys have ever tried this, but they have an immunity flavor that's like orange. So it tastes really good. It multiplies your water so that like one cup of water equals like four cups of water. I don't know how they do that with electrolytes and stuff, but the particular one that I get has a boost of vitamin C in it and zinc because it helps you kick those viruses way faster when you feel that sore throat coming on. Just like chug that vitamin C, <laughs> chug that zinc. And I love the way that it tastes and I don't like water. So it helps me stay hydrated when I'm sick. And then it has those immunity benefits in it. And I have also learned from my esthetician that, um, spoiler alert, I get Botox. And I was telling her how my Botox wears off very fast. She's like, oh, you need more zinc. I was oh, like, really? Oh, that's I was a good like, tip. I need, I need to try that. So now I'm like, oh, okay, I need more zinc. I need more zinc so that my, I have a very expressive forehead. So my, my Botox or whatever I put in there tends to wear off after a month. <laughs> and it costs way too much money for that to be happening. So this might be the last time I try it. We're going to see if the zinc helps. And if the zinc helps, then maybe I'll keep doing Botox. Vulnerability here, guys. Another thing that happens when you're great. over 40. And I really well talk enjoy about it. it. So, so many people. Yeah. It's just, it. Who cares? that's where we're at. That's okay. where we're at. So yeah. uh, Liquid IV, available awesome. on Amazon. Okay. Well, we will link <laughs> all of these favorite things in the description box below. We will also put down below all the different places that you can find Ashley's content, including her blog and her YouTube and her Instagram, her and we Pinterest, just, her, yes, she needs to have everywhere. a book one day. And I think that, that this people creating the, the game boards, they should come out with a at home Ashley line. So you need to start pitching. I would love that. I know. That'd be awesome. That is such a great idea. <laughs> and we just want to thank you, Ashley, so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. I know people are going to learn so much and be blessed by your, you know, 
just your business and what you bring to the social media community. I think that there's a lot of joy in what you bring and just a lot of fun too. So we're so happy that we got the chance to sit down with you. Thank you. It was really fun. I loved our conversation. So thanks. Awesome. Well, we'll be back again soon with another podcast and we'll see you next time in the Cypress Room.